How's it going, people? I'm doing great. I just got the keys to my new house today. I'm at my mom's place right now. I got to turn on the water and, uh, you know, propane and the lights and all that. It's my uh, weekend and, you know, vacation place. It's up here on Mount Hope, so I can uh, keep an eye on Mom. A little of the bubbly left over. Extra dry. Just like this promises to be. Yeah, I found this recently. And um, it's rather wordy. Um, I don't know if I can get through this uh, without gagging, but um, it's from the Living Waters, so you know it's quality. Oh, okay. Remember when? Do you remember how America wept when President Kennedy was shot? I was three years old. No. Neil Armstrong landed on the moon and we heard the immortal words, that's one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind. Um, what was I? Seven, I think. Um, <sighs> Vague memories. I remember some of the later ones. Um, um, how the years have flown by. Tell me about it. <coughs> hmm. That flew by too. Uh, time has been called our great commodity. By somebody. It's got quotations. Perhaps its greatest display of power is evidenced in its ability to reveal the mortality and frailty of human nature. Time. <sighs> Even in the lives of its most prominent figures, history bears witness to the powerful effects of time. It seems it was, uh, it seems as if, wait, it seems as though it were just yesterday when oh, Muhammad Ali, the three-time heavyweight boxing champion of the world, was bouncing around the ring, floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. Um, Yesterday? No, it feels like it was a while back, like decades ago. I remember I I watched those uh, fights, and um, damn good boxer. I mean, for a Muslim guy, I mean, a picture of him. Yeah, but this is about Christianity somehow. All right. Um, his quick wit. Swift feet and pulverizing punches won him worldwide recognition and inducted him into the coveted Hall of Fame. He was named by the Kentucky Senate as the greatest athlete of all time, and he was no doubt hailed by many as the most confident man alive. He was also thrown in jail for, uh, oh, not wanting to go to Vietnam, because uh, he's like, what did the Vietnamese ever do to me? Good question. Yeah, he was considered a traitor, and a lot of people hated him, and there was a lot of racism, but we're not going to talk about any of those unpleasant things, because this is a, this is a, you know, one of those sweet, fuzzy, you know, uh, sentimental tracks. All right. Uh his famous saying still echo in our ears. I'm not the greatest, I'm the double greatest. Not only do I knock him out, I pick the round. 
I am the astronaut of boxing. Joe Lewis and Dempsey were just plain pilots. I'm in a world of my own. He was entertaining. <laughs> I liked him, actually. Um, I'm a bad man. I'm a Muslim. <laughs> Which was fine with me. Yeah, whatever. Um, but they're not going to talk about that either. All right. Um, I'm the king of the world. It appeared that the champ was simply invincible until we all blinked and suddenly found him a frail and ailing man suffering from the advanced stages of Parkinson's disease. Those hands that had once launched at his opponents like satellite-guided missiles began to shake uncontrollably. The rapid-fire one-liners were reduced to slowly spoken three-word sentences and the unforgettable dancing feet no longer moved quite like they once did. Uh, that was a slow, painful process. Uh, it wasn't like I blinked and it happened. Um, I followed the whole thing. And it took a while. I guess we're talking perceptions here. All right. I'm just being contrary, aren't I? Ah. <sighs> Time took its toll on another one of our celebrated heroes. He was the paragon of superhuman strength, faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Superman. He's not real, though. Uh, then again, they're talking about Jesus, and I guess... Oh, maybe I'm not following this. I mean, where are you guys going with this? Uh, all right. We wore his insignia on our T-shirts and dressed our children in his world-famous costume. But while Superman defied the bounds of mortality in the world of make-believe, they do understand that it's make-believe. Christopher Reeve encountered a force more powerful than kryptonite in the real world. You know, where all this shit's a myth. <sighs> in the real world. It was as though we looked away for a brief moment, and when we looked back, we found America's greatest superhero. An actor who played a superhero. <sighs> Reduced to... Uh, the stature of a mere mortal. I always knew he was. Uh, did you think he was re real? I mean, did you think that was real stuff? I mean, come on. I know the difference between fantasy and reality. I just would suspend disbelief for 90 minutes. And these people do it their whole lives. All right. As a quadriplegic, he exchanged his cape for a wheelchair, his mighty wind-gushing lungs for a ventilator, and his bulletproof, robust body for one that no longer worked. Where are you going with this? All right, I guess I'll read on. While the uh, famous are loved and adored by their devoted fans... And the infamous are despised by their enemies. Time delivers inevitable death to each without distinction. Hell, even Jesus died and stayed that way. Uh, these famous, wait, these infamous men were the sons of a wicked and powerful dictator shrouded in wealth. What, Lex Luthor? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and power from childhood. Uh, Uday, Uday and Kusei Hussan considered themselves to be untouchable. I wonder if they're going to go on about Osama bin Laden. or is this, Maybe this predates that. I don't know. Um, 
Their brazen images were broadcast around the globe as they strutted about with their entourages like some rap stars. Um, puffing on cigars surrounded by beautiful women. They were larger than life with countless palladial homes, fleets of exotic automobiles, and an assortment of uh, unimaginable luxuries. One minute they were seated in ivory towers defining the United States with boastful words and vowing swift victory over the infidels. That's us. Everybody here. Uh, in the next moment, their mangled, lifeless corpses were displayed on cold tables for all the world to see. And then they, we hung his daddy, their daddy. Uh, and that's it for the champagne. Uh, anyway, all right. It is often sobering, I hope not, uh, to hear of such tragic endings to storybook lives that we would have otherwise expected to end happily ever after. You might have. I live in the real world. Time would fail us. Oh, wait. Time would fail us to speak to Princess Diana what it says. Uh, Ronald Reagan, John Lennon, Elvis Presley, Bob Hope, and counsel, countless others. But you talk to Jesus. <laughs> Some people actually can hear him answer back inside their heads. <sighs> oh, yeah. Um, knowing that these things have happened to the modern gods. They're not, they're idols. It's idolatry. Uh, modern gods of our age, we are forced to take a good hard look at ourselves and learn a lesson or two about our own mortality. Indeed, time is no respecter of persons and the winds of change blow in every direction, whirling us all into a most uncertain future. Oh. That's why they're going to live forever after they die. Then none of that shit matters. Because it's going to be storybook time. <laughs> there is a reason why everything that we hold dear to us can be suddenly stripped away. There is an answer to why our every heartbeat is the drumbeat to our own funeral march and why our lives upon this earth, this one, um, will forever be at the mercy of the cold hands of death. That's, that's uh, uplifting. Uh, the Bible tells us that we have violated an we have violated an eternal law that we have sinned against God, the God of the universe, by breaking his holy commandments. Is that what it is? Hmm. We we are told the we are told the soul we are told the soul that sins, it should, it shall die. Ezekiel 18.4. That's why we don't have Elvis anymore. And it is appointed for men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So you die, but only physically. Hebrews 9, 27. So, it, if you jump around, you can find these. As you look into the mirror of God's righteousness, uh, 
God's righteous standard, ask yourself if you will be innocent or guilty when you stand before him on the day of judgment. For it is not only time that is at stake, but your eternal destiny, which has nothing to do with time because it's outside of time. It's timeless. The Ten Commandments say, You shall have no other gods before me. You should not make for yourself any graven image. You shall not take the name of the, the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. I invite everyone to read Exodus 20. It's not quite that way. It's not just Ten Commandments. They keep going into Exodus 21, where they talk about how you could sell your daughter as a sex slave and how to, you know, get away with beating your slave and, you know, why people can be property, things like that. It, it never says, uh, all right, stop. All right, that's it. Now all this other stuff is just extra. All right. Yeah, read Exodus 20, please. And then read 21. As you journey back in time to days gone by, what am I, time machine? <laughs> you can see in your mind's eye the instances when you chose to disobey the God who gave you life. Do you remember those moments when you, uh, moments? When, instead of speaking words of truth, you fabricated lies and uttered falsehood. Which is the same thing. But they wanted to stretch this out. <sighs> Do you recall the times when you reached out your hand in greed and covetousness to steal the things that belonged to others regardless of the value or how long ago it was? <laughs> it's all about feeling guilty and then needing to uh, expunge your guilt by the blood atonement of some 2,000-year-old dead Jew. Uh, be honest with yourself, because nothing you've done has ever escaped the notice of God. He even watches children being raped and stuff. Yeah, He doesn't miss a thing. He doesn't do anything about it, but he's watching and he's keeping careful. Yeah, he's keeping a tally and checking it twice. Uh, before whom all things are open and bare. Hebrews 4.13. He doesn't miss anything. A sparrow has a heart attack and drops, you know, he sees it. If a, you know, the pigeon, you know, craps on a statue. He didn't miss that. <sighs> Cricket farts. He doesn't miss that. All right. According to his holy standard, if you have ever looked with lust, you are guilty of adultery. He just didn't enjoy it as much, that's all. Um, if you have um, used his name in vain, you are a blasphemer. I enjoy it. Um, if unjust anger or hatred ever welled up in your heart towards another, then you are considered a murderer, so you may as well knock the person off. Because you're already guilty of killing him, even though he's alive. <laughs> yeah. Thought crimes. God is just, and his word promises that all liars, thieves, adulterers, blasphemers, and murderers will face the fury of his wrath in hell forever. That's so just. Yeah, you know, uh, finite crimes, infinite punishment. Yeah. Earthly death is merely the initial phase of God's judgment. There is what the Bible calls the second death. And this is the lake of fire. Revelation 20. 14. 
It is a place of conscious and eternal torment where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25, 30. Out of the mouth of Jesus. Torture forever. Because you might have stole a Snickers bar. Although we are deserving of condemnation, uh, God, in his infinite love and mercy, has provided a way for mankind to be saved. He, yeah, let's hear about it. About 2,000 years ago, Sorry, I, I, they went there. <laughs> he sent a son to this earth. In the person of Jesus Christ, Jesus willingly suffered and died on a cross to pay for the sins of humanity. And that makes a lot of sense if you were brainwashed. You know, if they indoctrinated you as a child and you grew up thinking this made sense, it makes sense. But if you really give it some thought, it doesn't make any fucking sense at all. All right. <sighs> he then rose again on the third day, defeating death and promising eternal life as a free gift of his grace to all those who put their faith in him. Yeah, so Christians are off the hook. <laughs> the Bible assures us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, John 3.16. They always got to use that one. God now calls you to turn away from your sins and to trust in the death of Jesus on your behalf. Just like Adam and Eve. I mean, they ate that forbidden piece of fruit listening to a damn talking snake, and that fucked everything up for you. So another guy had to die, but he was actually God and his son and his sacrifice and... Okay, it's all back in story time, back in, you know, back in the magic days. All right. All right. Um, trust in, his, in the death of Jesus Christ on your behalf, confessing him as your Lord and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Doesn't the Bible tell you not to trust your heart in Proverbs and I think Jeremiah? It says only a fool listens to their heart because it's deceitful. And tells you what you want to hear, because it's your freaking, it's what you want to hear. I mean, that's all. All right. Um, hmm. He will wash away your sins and grant you an inheritance in his eternal kingdom somewhere. An inheritance with, uh, an inheritance which time can never take away. That's how they connected it back. They go from remember when to never, never land. Okay. Yeah, time will no longer matter, and you won't even get bored singing in the celestial choir for eternity, kissing that heavenly sphincter. All right. In the quietness of your own heart, and in your own words, confess your sins to God now. And ask him for forgi to forgive you. Then, in obedience to his command, be baptized as his disciple. Join a fellowship of believers where you can get that confirmation bias. You know, and they just keep feeding the same shit to you, so you never think any new thoughts and stop asking those pesky questions. Just they'll fuck your faith all up. <sighs> in the Christ. In a Christ-centered church, and commit yourself 
to the study and obedience of his word, the Bible. But don't read the thing from cover to cover. Let them show you how to jump around. Because that will fuck your faith up too. Thank you for taking the time to read this. You're welcome. Thank you for giving me a reason to drink. Um, please do something about the state of your soul today. Before time runs out, and like, you know, Muhammad Ali, and you turn out to be, you know, a three-syllable drooler. For as someone once said, someone, time is like a snowflake. It melts away while we try to decide what to do with it. Someone said that. Written by Emil Zawain, E-Z. Okay. And that's with the compliments of the living waters. Anyway, I hope I hope you enjoyed that. And it changed your fucking life and maybe saved your soul if you have one. Oh. You know, get with the program. I'm just trying to help out here, folks. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. I hope it's half as good as what I've been having lately.